I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. It is a gloriously gloomy, rainy day here in Santa Cruz. It's like flooding. My friends in LA, well, I haven't seen them in a while, but they used to call it Santa Freeze. Maybe I've talked about that because they were lived in, lived in Pasadena and they come up here and be like, what the hell is this? Not in the winter when they come here in the summer and they're expecting like go to the beach in Santa Cruz and the fog would be here. Like, and then you is- get into the water and you get pins and needles because it's so freezing. It never gets warm. It's just always consistently chilly. And then we're complaining here and all you people in Wisconsin right now are like, shut the fuck up. It's snowing everywhere. The weather's crazy everywhere. Yeah, well, it is. Tis the season. So we're recording this in late December. So this is going on uh, air in the new year. So happy new year, everyone. Yeah, it's 2022. I'm glad we remember that. It's funny recording this on the December 28th or 9th or whatever day it is. Yeah, the 29th. Yep. So happy new year. Happy 2022. I hope it is a year of lots of orgasms. Bye, 2021. See you later. Yeah, I'm ready to move forward. I'm feeling pretty good about it. And you know what a nice is what's a nice way to move forward into 2022? Barbara motherfucking gorillas. <laughs> She's someone you talked about so many times. You've taken her you've taken her course. Yes, her urban tantra professionals training, which is a and she talks about it in this interview because she's offering it again. Uh, for people who want to teach or offer Tantra in their uh, more in their work environment. So a lot of folks that were part of that training are other sex educators, sex workers, etc. Uh, and she is the author of Urban Tantra, the my favorite Tantra book in the whole world. Uh, and she's the author of many other books. You hear about this in the bio. We are talking about energy orgasms. And if you're like, oh God, they said energy, I'm tuning out. We're talking about everything from like how to breathe yourself into orgasm and how to have more ecstatic experiences in your body. So you definitely want to stay tuned. Plus she does a guided meditation with us. We're like, oh. She's been doing this work for a long time. Yeah, she's She's amazing. pretty much the OG and worth a listen quite entertaining and a wonderful speaker. Yeah, she has a great story about how she got into this in the 80s and we won't give it away. Um, but it's it's really, it was really revolutionary and I highly, when I said meditation, by the way, don't tune out also, it was erotic meditation. So you'll see, stay tuned and hopefully you will love her as much as we do. Uh, before we do a sex question, I have two announcements. We've been announcing this in the past couple of podcasts. We have a Discord now. What is that? It is an app where you can chat with other shameless sex listeners. It is completely free. Uh, I think now we have close to 100 on there already, and people are engaging. They're talking about podcast episodes and things, tips and tricks they've learned about sex. I'm on there. April will be on there soon. Um, and you can go and sign up for it, again, for free. If you go click the link in the show notes, uh, it should take you right there, and you can connect with other fans. Is that a newer app? I don't know about when the app came about into the world. Uh, it's pretty awesome, though. I was on there for a fair amount of time today. We have a new awesome per, uh, moderator there running, just a volunteer moderator who's running it for mm. us and uh, it's really cool to see people saying you know I listened to this episode and this is I tried this sex technique and it totally worked and you know it's just it's just really awesome for them to be able to connect in that way uh, and and we get to be on there too so I need to check it out I just need to download the app yeah let's see if you find, can find time and just get you off of it and then I'll go investigate <laughs> go investigate go check out those things uh, we also have another offering coming up that will be for single folks uh, for on February 11th so this is on Valentine's Day weekend before Valentine's Day, and it is a astrological speed dating. Damn it, people tuned out again because it's astrological. It's not all gems and crystals. Again, it is a online speed dating event for shameless sex listeners, again, to connect with each other, but this time for single folks to connect with each other. 
Um, and there will be an as- astrology component where we will have someone do your chart just so you know various aspects of your sign and that can be a prompt for your speed dating questions but we'll also give you other fun prompts like whatever share your favorite shameless sex episode or your your highest passions and hopes and dreams whatever you'll only get a limited amount of time to connect with all these different humans we're advocating that you go in there just to make new friends and maybe some bonuses for some new dates is it through discord nope this is a separate thing so to find out about this you actually go to purepleasureshop.com you go to the online classes and events link and then you can sign up we are only taking 40 people and here's the thing this round is going to be limited to folks between the ages of 20 and 42 and we're not this is not ageism because we would like to do other rounds if this goes well we want to do other rounds with different brackets uh, and then also this one is for folks who identify as female, um, who are interested in folks who identify as male. And um, again, we are not limiting it in the future. If this goes well, we will open it to other uh, groups of folks. And maybe we'll even try one that has all the humans. And I absolutely hate doing things like this. It just drives me crazy to make it limited to ages and genders. And I just haven't found out the right way or like an easy way to do it with that will flow well, especially with the app that we're using. So I'm just giving that little um, disclaimer there that we're not uh, trying to exclude people. If this goes well, we're going to open it up in other ways and try to keep this as a regular thing with different things. Might not always be astrology. Hmm. Um, but if you want your single person, you want to go and meet other shameless sex fans, go to purepleasureshop.com and sign up. Again, we're only limited spots. And um, let's see, what's the last thing I wanted to say about it? Oh, the reason why I was excited about this is because if I wasn't a shameless sex uh, co-host, but I was a Shameless Sex fan, I would want to connect with other Shameless Sex fans because I'd be like, you're my people because you're open to talking about sex. So I think that, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But I like this yeah. idea. Yeah. It's going to be fun to and, see how it pans out. And then you could be like, you know what? Valentine's Day is kind of awesome because I have a fun event coming up. So hey. Hey. You ready for a sex question? I am. Okay. Sex question. Very uh, short and sweet. How do I find someone real on the dating apps? It seems like there are so many scams that want money and it's hard to tell who's real. That's it. That's all they ask. But (laughs) it's a good straight to the the point question. So Um, dating apps have scams? Oh, yeah. You haven't heard about the scam artists? No. Oh, my God. What they say, like, what, you you can meet me and then give me money first? Oh, there's that. But there's there's multiple scams on there. There's scams where there's cam people on there that are pretending like they're a single person who wants to date you and then they're trying to get you to go to the cam site later. So Mm -hmm. that's a really common one where they're you pay, going to eventually pay them money there is romance scams though which is a real thing have you oh my god there is an episode on hidden brain about romance scams and it's actually not about romance scams it's about how we want to believe what we want to believe and it's hard to convince anyone otherwise so like i'm uh, i'm dating a romance scammer like a scammer and my friends all know that i am and they're like this is fake this is not real because i want to believe it so heavily i can't think outside of it and then any little sign that it might be real i continue to believe it and it talks about this romance scam where this woman met this amazing person on a dating app oh my god they just like fell in love but never saw each other's faces and um and they would talk on the phone even all these things and and fell in love within weeks and it was this amazing connection she came from a sad divorce or something and Um, and then they talked about, but he could never FaceTime or something. And then he eventually asked, come, come meet me in Texas or something. And so she flew out to Texas and he never showed up. And then the next day he's like, oh, I didn't show up. She's angry. She's like, oh my God, my friends are right. This isn't real. Cause he couldn't, they were saying it wasn't real cause they wouldn't FaceTime. And then the next day she's upset. She's like this, maybe it's not real. But then he responds with, um, I, my son, I'm so sorry. My son died. I was in the hospital all night. And then she starts sending him money. Oh, no. Wow. Like thousands of dollars. And so I don't think this person is asking about that, about the romance scams, because that's less common. But it is a thing. I actually know someone else, a real human uh, here in Santa Cruz, um, who is scammed. uh, Yeah, they're in the middle of it. Um, And so but I think this person is speaking more to cameras. So. I, I, and this is not my area of expertise, but just like, you know, how, so if you're on a dating site, how, what are the best tools to figure out, is this human real? One would be as you get to know them, that they would be willing to FaceTime with you for free, you know, that they're not like putting, oh, I can't, I can't right now. So ma- to make sure that they're willing to do that and also that they would also send you photos. Um, also, I just kind of feel like the way we can ask questions and engage might be able to tell. Unless they're a romance scammer, they're going to say whatever they want because that's a real, you know, human. 
But for the cam people, I think they're kind of trying to navigate pretty quickly to get you on their site. Um, and so I would ask them more like in depth questions, not like simplified questions. Yeah. Like straight to the point in depth questions, which I don't know exactly what that looks like. Maybe we can come up with a couple, but yeah. I think if anyone's asking you for money, it's probably best just to <laughs> yeah. back off. Well, I think this person wants to not even ha- meet the people asking for money to start, but I'm saying like, how, how quickly can you ask specific questions that would be help you determine, is this a real human or not? And real, like cam people are real, but you know what else happens in the cam world? It'll be like some dude pretending like they're, a cam, or they're a lady with a late fake lady photo, and they get you to go to her her profile, and then she ends up eventually talking to you. But mm-hmm. you're so you're engaging with someone who's not even the real person. So, but again, I would be like asking them more in depth questions about their lives beyond, you know, just like simplified things of like, oh, you know, what are your do what I don't know, like what what are you into, or do you come here often, <laughs> or things like that. More like deep in depth questions are gonna take them a lot of effort, and maybe they'll be like. Fuck this What's your favorite real. shameless sex episode? Yeah, but like more in-depth things that are like expanding their minds. So they're like, this is so much effort. I, it takes too much work. So I'm going to leave this engagement. Quick, Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like make it complicated for them. But also then you might lose people that are interested. <laughs> I don't know. Well, um, I'm trying to think of like the in-depth questions that I like to ask. Like, what are you most passionate about in this in life? You know, what really drives you and fills you up and charges you? Like, what was like the most exciting, interesting thing that happened to you this last month? What's about what about childhood wounding? <laughs> uh, it that is a it's a it's a very complicated world out there with the digital the interface that we all have because there is so much room for lying and and mm-hmm. putting up a facade you could because even if they don't send you a, in a photo of, of or they won't FaceTime with you they could send you a fake photo or they could make up reasons their camera's broken or something and yeah. there's just so many there's so much room that's hard i don't i don't have a good answer for this question either well that's why i would but also I like ask, what you were saying i would ask for more more photos eventually as you start to get to know them uh, and to and not like send me dick pics but more photos of like show me photos of you out in nature or like of your hobbies or things like that and if they only have limited photos of them in their bedroom like you know you everyone has other things showing them out in their lives you know i want to see what your life is like as i get to know you also you could say I've uh, I've been scammed before, so I want to get to know, make sure you're a real person. Can you send these things? Um, and yeah, and just kind of see what happens. And the last thing I'll say about this is, if it doesn't feel real, it might not be real. Like go go with that gut instinct there. Like if it's or here I'll say this: if it's too good to be true, oh my god, the smoking hot like ten plus babe as she's into me and she's saying and she wants to meet me right away, mm, might not be real. Uh, yeah. So just go with your instinct on that one. That's a good question. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. The There's romance scams. Scammers everywhere. All right, you ready for a bio? Yep, bio me. All right. Barbara Corellis is the founder of Urban Tantra, an approach to conscious sexuality that adapts and blends a wide variety of sacred sexuality practices from Tantra to BDSM. She is the author of Urban Tantra, Sacred Sex for the 21st Century, Ecstasy is Necessary, and Luxurious Loving. Her books and workshops are an eclectic mix of sexual and spiritual practices designed to encourage readers to expand their capacity for both pleasure and spiritual fulfillment. To learn more, visit barbaracorellis.com. But first... It's a new year, so why not try some sexy new things in the bedroom with a build-your-own box from Like a Kitten. With the BYOB, you get to choose one out of eight plus items from each of the six steamy categories like sex toys, lubes, games, sexy accessories, lingerie, and even beauty products. So you have all the erotic essentials you need in one box. Choose your own date night adventure with items like a remote-controlled panty vibe, clit gel, a year of sex card game, a satin blindfold, and even a satin rope and more. This box has everything you need for the perfect night in. And what's even more amazing is that the box only costs $69. Some of the vibrators alone retail for more than $69. Plus, right now, Like a Kitten is offering our listeners 20% off and free shipping when you go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or enter code shameless at checkout. Just go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or use code shameless to get 20% off these incredible boxes. Likeakitten.com slash shameless. The link is in the episode's description. So go check it out, meow. And now it's interview time. Hey, everyone. Amy here again. And we will be diving into the interview as promised. 
We just realized that the audio is not as crisp as usual. We had a little bit of a tech issue with the program we normally use and had to switch to Zoom. And well, it might sound like we're in a little bit of a tin can. But please be patient with us because there is really good stuff in this interview. So if you can get around the fact that the audio might not be perfect, uh, there is still wonderful stuff in store. So we apologize. Stay tuned and enjoy. Barbara Corellis, author of Urban Tantra and of so many other things as well. Um, and I just want to share with you, we probably already did in the intro, but we haven't done the intro yet as we record this, um, that uh, Barbara Corellis is really near and dear to my heart. Um, and when I was, I think I said late 2014, so I forgot how old I was then. How old am I now? I don't know. Anyways, uh, I, was, I was in my early 30s. Ancient. And, um, yeah, I'm ancient. And uh, I took, uh, or no, I was probably 29 then. Anyways, I took um, my first kind of official Tantra training. I'd done Tantra classes and I decided to sign up for Barbara's because I loved her book, Urban Tantra. I loved how inclusive it is um, and how it includes uh, BDSM or also links BDSM and Tantra. And a lot of times people think it's very separate and most Tantra is very heteronormative. And um, and so I did this five-day intensive training or Barbara's Urban Professionals training. And for five days, we were in a room on on Folsom Street in San Francisco, uh, all practicing all these Tantra skills together, tying each other up, all kinds of wonderful things. And it totally changed my life. So um, we are really excited to have you here, Barbara, and hear and learn from you kind of in person for us, but also over a video screen. So welcome to Shameless Sex, Barbara. Thank you. I love your podcast. It's so exciting to actually be on it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're ha so happy to have you here. So we already said a little something about you in the intro that we haven't recorded yet, but we know we will. So, <laughs> But we'll start with the same prompt that we do with all of our guests. Can you please tell us how you got to where you are today in the field or world of sexuality? Sure. Um, it The answer is pure, simply, and always the same. It was the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. Um, I was working in the Broadway theater, which I did for many, many years. And uh, suddenly everybody was sick and then they were dying. And by the mid eighties, mid to late eighties, I was a mess. I was pretty destroyed. I was at my edge. And I went to a healing circle founded on the principles of Louise Hay's work. Uh, she was doing the Hayride in Los Angeles. The healing circle was the equivalent in New York City. There I met Annie Sprinkle and Joseph Kramer. Joseph, founder of Sexological Body Work. Annie is Annie. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and um, we found that the three of us, we were learning to love ourselves. We were learning to forgive ourselves. We were um, growing spiritually and emotionally. And we three all had the same question. But what about sex? Because we all knew that at a certain point, people would get over their abject fear of, of dying because of their uh, uh, of having unprotected sex with someone. And they would just go back to, to having sex the way they did before. And it was going to be a disaster as if it wasn't already in the eighties. So um, Joseph had started um, exploring Taoist sexuality. And we were looking toward the East because in the East, we were told that there were traditions uh, of sexuality that were less genital focused and more energy focused. And we went, hmm, this could be a good place to start to reinvent a sexuality for the AIDS era. So it, Joseph was exploring Taoist work and rebirthing a breathwork process that was popular in the day. And we started exploring Tantra. And we would go out and we would study with somebody and we would look for nuggets of something useful. And if we thought we had something, we would bring it back to the circle. We would fashion it in such a way that we thought the, in this case, primarily gay men would get it. And if it worked, we kept it and went, okay, that's gonna work. And then we go out and look for something else. And that's essentially how what became Urban Tantra got built. It was a, a form of Neo-Tantra, meaning Clearly, this is not ancient Hindu classical Tantra, but it was very, very true to the spirit of Tantra because Tantra throughout the hundreds of years it's been around has consistently reinvented itself and consistently reinvented itself in um, 
uh, to suit the times. It's always been uh, because Tantra, in essence, says you can uh, reach spiritual enlightenment, we'll use their terminology, simply by walking through the world in a particular conscious matter by manner, by squeezing all there is from life and using tantric principles to do that. And we'll talk about how that relates to sex in a moment. Um, you can have not only the juiciest life here on earth, but also realize some important spiritual truths. Now that was really appealing to us because we wanted a sexual, a way of having sex that was physically safe, meaning no body fluids, that was emotionally and even maybe physically healing and that had a strong spiritual component because people were dying and when your friends are dying you really need something in the spiritual realm to comfort you and most of the people during those times had been kicked out of the religion they were born into because they were gay and because they had AIDS. So Tantra kind of ticked all the boxes and indeed we were able to um, find hot, mind-blowing, spirit-lifting ways to have sex that did not involve spreading AIDS through bodily fluids. So it worked. Wow. That is such a great story of your intro into the field of sexuality and so necessary and so complete because that, that touches me so much because I've like watched so many, I grew up in the eighties, but I was too young to learn about AIDS. And now when I watch documentaries, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, Oh my God. So thank you, Barbara. Thank you for that, yeah. that work. And like, I was getting a little teary eyed because I was like, that is so beautiful that you were able to, to initiate this, um, this move movement. And so any, I just wanted to say that. So thank you, thank you. because, um, thank you, you really did strike a chord with me. Um, so my question for you is, uh, probably a really big one, even though it's a short question is how do you personally define orgasm? That is a super great question. And you're right. It's a big one, but I'll cut straight to it with eight. I define orgasm as a release of tension and an expansion of energy flowing through the body, mind, and connecting us to spirit. I'll say that again. Mm. A release of tension and an expansion of energy flowing through the body, mind, and connecting us to spirit. As opposed to some more traditional definitions of orgasm, such as a sexual climax attained by stimulation of the genitals and other erogenous zones, or slight somewhere between the two a release of accumulated tension and energy all those are components of orgasm but the fullness of orgasm in my world is um is that first definition it's something that um feels bigger than the being containing it it's almost like your molecules step a few feet apart and you become both larger and more ephemeral and sort of can become part of all that is. Mm -hmm. I love that because, well, for so many reasons, but also because everyone is so different and an orgasm is just limited to the genitals. One, I think it's just limiting just some genitals contracting and therefore you had an orgasm, uh, but everyone's different. Some people have spinal cord injuries and they can't have orgasms through their genitals anymore. And, and there's, or trauma, you know, there's so many different reasons why it's, it's really helpful to expand our idea of um, orgasm and um, to be inclusive in ways that might include all folks in the way that they might want to show up. And we can add new things to the menu uh, in how terms about of how people, how about people who, who aren't, um, who have had genital orgasms and not particularly just nice ones for 35 years. And now we're like kind of over it. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even really interested. And so what do we do? And yeah. a lot of these people are vulva owners owners and we we shame them and we tell them they're broken and we tell them they need medicine yeah you know pharma big pharma medicine mm -hmm. usually when in reality what they really want to go out and do is make art travel the world have dance gasms have art gasms have travel gasms mm -hmm. and i in ecstasy is necessary sorry i wrote about this i i asked people name me 
orgasmic experiences, ecstatic experiences other than sex. I've never had more answers to a question that I've ever asked, like on social media, hundreds. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in what they are, ecstasy is necessary. I listed them all. <laughs> but orgasm and an ecstatic experience is so much bigger than just something that happens in your genitals. Orgasm doesn't even happen in your genitals. It happens in your brain anyway. <laughs> Rant over. I'm sorry I interrupted. No, rant away. away. Yeah, I love it. Largest sex organ there. Your brain, everyone. And and also just adding more things to the menu to, to kind of spice things up. Like you said, it maybe someone is 35 years and kind of sick of just having, you know, whatever penetrative sex or um I've been mean, using my vibrator or however I've been masturbating with my hand. And, and you know, it's nice to learn something new or different, or maybe I don't want to touch other bodies, but I still want to be connected to something bigger, which brings us to this idea of energy orgasms or energy orgasms, which a lot of people I think when they hear about it, they're like, what the fuck? I mean, is an or does an orgasm already have energy? So, can you tell our listeners? And by the way, Annie Sprinkle lives here in the mm -hmm. mountains of Santa Cruz and would teach up pure pleasure. And I have seen Annie Sprinkle on the floor having energy work. Yeah, oh, and I there? was like, oh, it was so powerful. Yeah. Like the most powerful energy orgasms for like that blew my little minutes. Wisconsin mind. Yeah, at the time I was like, wow, yeah. that's oh, such amazing. Yeah. <laughs> never seen. I never knew you could do yeah. that. <laughs> and then in your training, I remember we practiced that, and you did this guided session. And anyway, so what is an energy orgasm? And can just about anyone learn one? Yes. And Annie and I learned them from the same teacher at the same time. <laughs> it's a tradition we share. Um, <laughs> an energy orgasm is, as I define orgasm, remember that definition. Um, it's an orgasm achieved without genital stimulation. Uh, and yes, anyone can have one. I'm sure there might be somebody on the planet who can't, but I haven't met them yet. That's all. Um, more, more completely of an answer. Their full body orgasmic ecstatic experiences that you feel all, usually feel kind of everywhere, kind of all over your body. And interestingly enough, most people feel them everywhere in their body, except in their genitals. It's the rare person that also feels them in their genitals. But that means that if you learn how to have a breath and energy orgasm and then you combine it with gen genital stimulation, wow, right? Um, but the breath and energy orgasm itself is um, certainly the tension release is absolutely there. And a feeling of freedom is what most people report. And the other bit of it I, I think is really important is that it can be a powerful emotional, it can produce profound emotion gasms, like giggle gasms, cry gasms, um, even anger gasms. And Annie actually has in one of her films uh, uh, an example of a really good anger gasm. Um, anger in its pure energetic form, not anger as violence directed towards somebody else. People get that a little confused. But usually giggle-gasms and cry-gasms, and often people alternate between the two. Sometimes they don't know why they're laughing or why they're crying, but it just feels really good. And at the end, they feel lighter and cleansed and free. And one of the breath and energy orgasms teach us so much. One of the things they demonstrate so profoundly for me is the emotional release part of orgasm and how important it is. I think that we learn how to have orgasms depending on how we grew up. And in general, in the West, those orgasms need to be controlled. You can't laugh too hard. You can't cry too hard. God knows you can't get angry. Um, you can't make too much noise. Um, you can't fart, you can't, you, you, you cannot be free in your expression. You better keep it within, keep it, keep it on the road, you know, no, no off track adventures. And that's really, really a shame that orgasm, which was clearly in my view, designed to be such a freeing, enlightening, powerful experience is tamed down to something uh, 
acceptable by society. I'm doing that in air quotes. Um, anyway, yeah, mm. my rant on. And so is it is a so sleepgasm is an energy orgasm? So you're talking about breathgasms. Like I, if I have an orgasm, I sleep. That's an energy orgasm as an well. En- I think so. I think an energy orgasm, and some people can do it by simply thinking. Mm-hmm. They can just think themselves into a physical mm-hmm. orgasm. That's also an energy orgasm in my book. I need to learn that skill. I know. <laughs> not every, I, I not everybody can. I have done it, mm-hmm. but it's certainly not nothing that I can reliably you know, produce, whereas the breath and energy orgasm, easy. <laughs> well, we're, so we did, so you've talked about, I think you've talked about a lot of the, the, the what, and then the why is obviously the, the transcending yourself from this kind of traditional bubble that a lot of our Western culture locks us into, um, or maybe a box, however you want to think of it. Um, and some other reasons, which I'm, I'm just kind of hearing you say, you've also talked about the how, and we're going to get into tips because our listeners love tips, but will you dive a little bit deeper into the, the, the why folks out there, if they're like, Oh, I do like my genital orgasms that I have, but why, why do I want to have energy orgasms and how is this going to benefit me? Like, great question. Great mm-hmm. question. Do I have to trade one for the other? No. Yeah. The breath and energy orgasm technique teaches so that teaches you and shows you and demonstrates for you so many more possibilities of your sexuality than you might discover any other way, which is one of the reasons I love it. First of all, it feels completely unique when you lie mm-hmm. down. And with a little imagination and a lot of breath can go into this completely altered full body, excuse me, ecstatic state and stay there hanging out in the altered for minutes. You kind of go, if this is possible and nobody told me, what else out there is possible that no one's told me about. What am I missing? You know, there's a whole nother realm of experience that clearly I haven't visited. That's one thing. Um, I've seen it lift the ceiling of possibilities for people in all sorts of areas of their life. Secondly, the healing power of the emotional release is really profound. I have an example from this week. One of our colleagues, Amy, uh, another graduate of the program, uh, pinged me on social media saying, thank you for the breath and energy orgasm meditation, which I recorded. She said, I was caught on the highway in a gunfight. I went, a gunfight? Yes, gunfire and whizzing around her car going on on the highway. And she was obviously traumatized. And one of the things she used to help her get through the trauma beyond talking to friends and some other techniques was the breath and energy orgasm meditation Hmm. because it physically helped her release the trauma from her body. And if you studied any trauma theory stuff, uh, humans, uh, animals are really good at shaking off trauma and moving on without it. We're not so good at it. We're better at holding it. And this meditation helped her let go of that trauma. Hopefully no one listening is going to be in that exact situation anytime soon, but just saying. Uh, Plus all the simple techniques involved in having a breath and energy orgasm, which are simply breathing, using your imagination a bit, a little bit of movement, a bit of sound. um, All of that contributes to better genital orgasms. People think that and are, 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 are trained to think, taught to think, um, all about the physical hows and whys and how to's of orgasm. And nobody explains what's going on energetically, the effect that the deep breathing, ah, ah, when you're having great sex, is having on orgasm production uh, or sounds. They're act- making sounds actually makes for better orgasms. <laughs> So does some movement. Even people who like to be tied up, because they're tied up, they're moving against whatever they're tied up with. And that's a kind of movement that will produce a stronger orgasm. So the breath and energy orgasm has all these little um, techniques, little teacher techniques in there. Hmm. Um, And all of those things, 
all the techniques that it takes to do a breath and energy orgasm, all of which are very simple, lead to better genital sex, period, full stop. <laughs> That's why it's worth doing. Yeah. And, and then if you combine the techniques, you can sort of have an energy, you can not sort, you can have an energy orgasm and a genital orgasm mixed together. Wow. How fun is that? It's very uh, fun. It, it's yeah, very think, fun. Yeah. It's very April's, fun. April's doing the whoop. You got to tune in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Arsenio Hall. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> double orgasm. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah triple orgasm. Um, I, every time I've done your energy orgasm practice, uh, whether it was in your workshop or on my own, or, and I also, you recently during the pandemic, well, I guess we're still in it, but you know, that you did an <laughs> online class and it was on zoom and it was a, maybe a two hour class. And I was surprised there was like 75, 80, hundred people on different screens, all practicing together. And we laid down and you're, you know, it's fully clothed. We're not touching ourselves. And you guided us in this half an hour journey. My partner was here too. We did it together. And I feel after that, I feel like it's the best spa visit slash dance class slash sex session that I have ever had. I feel so alive. Like every single cell is vibrating. Um, I'm just, I'm so kind of rejuvenated and just, it feels incredible. Um, and so I just, but then I later I'm like, so why am I not doing that every day? You know, because <laughs> I think there's a, there's a part, you know, and I guess we'll ask the tips here too. And I'll make it a two part question here. So I'm sure listeners are like, okay. But how do I do this? So can if you can teach us a little bit about the how. And then also, is this something people can do kind of like as a quickie thing? Is it like a five minute version or does it always have to be like a 20, 30 minute thing? Good question. Good question. It's when you first start, it'll take you a little longer to perhaps feel the effects of it. When you when you're when it's in your muscle memory, it's amazing how much more quickly you can hit that that state. Uh, a chiropractor described it to me once as you're literally creating new neural pathways. And once they're there, they're there for life. <laughs> so no, they don't go away. They're really let's hear it for those neural <laughs> pathways. Okay. So let's do um, just a little setup. How, what do you need to do to get into the space to have an energy orgasm? So let's everybody take a breath. <sighs> Relax your jaw, kind of do a fake yawn, or if it's the end of the day for you, a real one, either is fine. Just to get the sense of that open throat. And then with relaxed jaw, relaxed lips, just take a very gentle breath in through the mouth. And let it go with a sigh. We want an energizing breath and breathing through the mouth is more energizing, but we don't want a tense breath. Tense breath would look and sound something like this. That would put you in an altered state, but probably not one you'd like very much. But if you stay relaxed, kind of casual about it. I like to say the intentions on the inhale and you just let go of the exhale. And you breathe as fast or as slowly as you like, completely up to you, keep breathing. Now, first and foremost, this is a breath process. So if you lose the plot on the imagination or on anything else, that's fine, just keep breathing. But now imagine, keep breathing. Now imagine while you're breathing that there is like a tap root. And that tap root is between your genitals and your anus, right at the perineum. And this imaginary tap root, breathe into it and send it down into the center of the earth. You can imagine it in any way you like. Some people are good at visualizing, other people are better at feeling. Just Imagine that root there and imagine as you breathe, you're breathing that pure molten energy that they told you, have taught you about in geology in eighth grade, that molten center of the earth, that hot energy up into your lower belly. All you're doing is breathing 
with the intention of moving energy up your body. And now let it go a little higher up your body, maybe into your solar plexus. Keep breathing. Good, great, great, great. Now let it move up to your heart. Doesn't matter if you can feel this or not, just fake it, fake it till you feel it. Okay, so there's all that energy and you're breathing it into your heart. Awesome, you're doing great. Now breathe it up into your throat. Great, you can make a sound at your throat like, Ah, let it move up into your head. Imagine the energy filling up your body, coming in through the earth and going out the top of your head. Now take a few fuller, faster breaths. And take the next breath in, take it in, take it in, take it in, and hold it. Hold that breath, hold that breath, hold it, hold it, hold it. And let go. Do nothing. Just notice you were only breathing for like a minute. <laughs> this was the quickie demo version. But just notice, I can feel a little, little bit lightheaded and a little bit altered. How about you? I feel kind of high. Okay, I was gonna say, I feel kind of high right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, it's so good. And like, like I like smoked some nice CBD, but it had like <laughs> a little bit of something else in there that's really nice. <laughs> the closing of the eyes helped too. I think, cause I keep my eyes open sometimes during meditation, but closing my eyes, I can really focus on where I think my breath is going. Mm -hmm. So I opened my eyes a couple of times cause I was like, my dog was scratching my leg and I was like, ah, <laughs> damn it. But came that was really good. And I'm like, wait, closing the eyes. And then the throat and focusing on the point of where you were, you were speaking to. And I like the breathing through the mouth. I always concentrate on breathing through the nose. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of our amazing sponsors, such as UberLube. UberLube is a luxurious silicone lubricant that can enhance your sex and intimacy. UberLube's unique formula is velvety, long-lasting, with no flavor or scent, and it feels absolutely incredible on the body. There are thousands of doctors recommending UberLube to their patients because it's less likely to throw off your pH than most other lubes. So whether you want to make your hot sex even hotter or you want to prevent dryness, take our advice and check out our favorite go-to UberLube. UberLube isn't just for sex. I use it for massage, to tame my frizzy hair, to prevent chafing, even for oral sex sessions. I love how it comes in a beautiful bottle with a pump top for easy access, appearing more like a cosmetic product, so you can leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. UberLube is without a doubt my favorite lube, and countless listeners agree, often stating we never knew lube could be this good. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com. Use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS combines scientific research of real vulva owners so you can learn shame-free techniques on how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied 20,000 plus people of all ages and turned the research into animated modules, short videos, and beautiful infographics that are tasteful and easy to understand. Whether you want to learn about external pleasure, internal stimulation, or techniques with toys, OMGS can help you master vulva pleasure. Let me tell you, I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives because knowledge really can activate your pleasure power. OMGS is for anyone who cares about vulva pleasure and wants to take it to the next level. OMGS can help you become a sexual strategist by equipping you with the tools you need to unlock your pleasure potential. Plus, your OMGS purchase helps fund more pleasure research. OMG, that's wonderful. Only pay once and these techniques are yours forever. That's right, this is not a subscription service and you don't need to download a thing. So go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off when you purchase any OMGS season. 
Again, go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off right now. Time to pursue your pleasure. And now back to the show. And breathing through the nose is absolutely the healthy way to live your life. There is no question about that. And when we're having super passionate sex, we're not breathing through our nose. We're breathing like, <laughs> we're making sounds and we're breathing through our mouth. So to, to enhance that particular altered state of consciousness, to, to dive more deeply into it, breathing through the mouth really helps. And I encourage people to stay relaxed, as you heard. Now, it gets to a point where the breath is breathing you. And I've certainly seen many people in breath and energy orgasm sessions wind up doing, ah, 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 fine. But that's not, that's where their body took them. It's not what they're imposing on their body. So the staying relaxed and not pushing too hard while you're breathing through your mouth is also helpful, which is also what we were doing. Mm. And you got high anyway. Yep. So it's, <laughs> it's an altered state of consciousness that people often describe as lightheaded, to which I reply, could we all not stand to be a little bit lighter in the head? <laughs> I know I could. Yeah, me too. I'm heavy in the head. Yeah. Often. Heavy in the head. <laughs> There's a little more of those. Can, oh, sorry. Well, I was going to say, and uh, just from what I've done with you before too, you also teach, you also add in um, pelvic floor mm -hmm. re release and or re tighten and releasing as well. I mean, that's kind of some other things that you add there um, that people, if they want to learn more, that's, I mean, it's in your book. It's also, which we'll talk more about that later, about how to find that. But that's something else that people want to learn more that you add. You kind of add these layers to it. And that thing that you just said with, you know, visualization and breath, that's like a, you know, starting point, but there are other com components. And then you can be laying on the floor. That was like the, taste, that was like the yeah. moose boot. That yeah. was a moose boosh. Yeah. Now you can move into the big boosh. No, yeah. <laughs> I want. I like the boosh. That's good. That was one bite of the truffle. Yes. Of the chocolate yes. truffle cake. Yes. Yeah. You, you get the whole cake. Yeah. And um, I, I'll tell you about it in a little while. But I do have a guided meditation. It's inexpensive, and you can do this at home. Mm -hmm. Take a bit longer, and once, like I said, once you not, have learned how to do it, you can pretty well um, just decide how long you want to do it for. So a question for you now is going to go in terms of relationships and how energy orgasms can apply to folks' relationships because we talked about on your own. Is this something that partners can share with each other or they can just add to their sex lives on their own or with their partner? And I know you have ways, so just please, um, please enlighten us, Barbara, because you're so great. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things I most like to do with couples is to teach them Ex modified forms of energy orgasms that they can do facing each other and eye gazing. So like they could breathe together and eye gaze. And this doesn't have to be for half an hour, like I said. And at the end of that breath and energy uh, demo, there was that little breathe more quickly and hold it. I call that a clench and hold. And when you've built up a lot of energy, a lot of breath energy and sex energy, and you breathe quickly together as a charging breath, and then you're looking in each other's eyes and keep your eyes open, hold your breath, you actually, and then let go, you actually have the experience of having an open-eyed orgasm with your partner. Mm. And it's mind-blowing fun. Everyone just looking in the eyes like a crazy person. That's kind of scary, which she just did. But yeah. what you just explained is kind of, pretty hot, actually. I'm like, it's pretty uh, hot. It's yeah. pretty hot. And it's emotionally connecting. It's mm. intimate. In, in, in intimacy, sometimes, you know, is, is essentially when we use the word nowadays in just public discourse, it has, it's about as appealing as the word oversharing. You know, it's, it's got this veneer of, oh, not that, to mm -hmm. it. When in reality, intimacy is that feeling of being incredibly comfortable and incredibly embraced unconditionally by another. And these practices lead to that. Now, this breath technique can be combined with erotic massage. You can give your partner an erotic massage and that detailed instructions for that are in urban tantra um and with them breathing like this and you can end that erotic massage with 
a clench and hold and just hold the space for your partner to go on a journey. It's an incredible gift to give somebody. And it's a really good thing to practice for people who are just burned out on penis and vagina missionary position sex. It, 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 I suggested it for numerous couples, clients, and it really has just opened the door for so many possibilities because those erotic massages can look like anything. They can Is that be- a pelvic floor clench though, or the whole body clench? Is it's, it, like- it starts with the pelvic, great question. It starts with the pelvic floor, the abdomen and the butt. And then you can bring in the whole rest of the body. But if you just clench the pelvic floor, abs, butt, you'll get there. Mm-hmm. When I've done it with you in the past and the, at the end, you know, at the 25, 30 minute, you, you, after you've been tightening and releasing the pelvic floor with all breath and the imagination, all these things for a while. And then you do that hold the, the whole body, you hold the whole body and you hold your breath for a, a while as well. Maybe it's like 30 seconds or something. Um, and then that's, what you get. I was like, it'd get these visuals. And then when you release, oh my God, it's like the best release you've ever, ever had. But at that point, it was the entire body. But we had just been doing the pelvic floor yeah. throughout the rest of it. And yeah, yeah right. Potent medicine. So this, you, so you have online, you have a guided meditation for this. Um, and this is also an urban Tantra. And we already talked a little bit about urban Tantra to our listeners here. But can you share a little bit more? I really love how it weaves together, as I said before, BDSM and Tantra, also sex magic, though. Can you tell our listeners a little I bit of what, what they can expect from urban Tantra? Um, my intention for urban Tantra is that uh, people can learn that sexuality and spirituality, whatever you call spirituality, whatever that is for you, something bigger than you, let's leave it at that. Those two things are powerfully interconnected. In fact, they're not only interconnected, one is the logical result of the other. Sex will eventually lead to spirit and spirit will eventually lead to sex in the body. They're just connected. And I think one of my intentions with urban Tantra is to help people find that. Um, Tantra is an embodied spiritual practice. I know I keep using the spirit word. I know that's going to turn people off, but (laughs) it is a way of going deeper. It is a way of so much of Western thought has said that the body is the problem. And Tantra says, no, the body is the way through. And it's the vehicle to something bigger, something truer, something more wonderful. Connection with another person is one of those things, but also connection with yourself. And um, I think a lot of Tantra books are exclusively partner focused. And I believe that you can have a Tantra relationship with yourself. You can have a Tantra relationship with a partner. You can have it with a group. You can have it with something in spirit. I hope that I, I'm pretty sure people will leave real, having realized that breath is the single most powerful erotic tool that exists. Sorry, I know you have a store full of other wonderful things, but breath is actually better than all of them. It's always uh, with you, too. So it's, yeah, it's, totally. it's free of charge, yeah. unless you're on Mars. All those things in the store, when done with breath, are twice as much fun. So just consider that. <laughs> um, and that so many of the most powerful sexual components are not... Um, are not genitally based. They are the way you touch. They are... Uh, uh, the speed at which you touch, the pressure at which you touch, the mindfulness you bring. It actually makes sex simpler in a weird way because when you slow down and, and really appreciate just the touch of something on your skin or someone's embrace and go into that embrace or go into that touch completely you really don't need seven other supermarket tabloid techniques you just don't and that's that's the and i also wrote urban tantra for people who thought they 
weren't right for Tantra and Tantra wasn't right for them. And they would never fit in a Tantra community. They would never belong and they'd hate it. I wrote it for all those people. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I wanted all the people who thought that Tantra wasn't for them in the room with me. I wanted to make new friends. I wanted other cool adventurous seekers in the room, including kinky people. And what is very clear and has gotten more and more clear over the years is that the way most people practice BDSM has with its emphasis on consent, would it, when it, with its emphasis on extreme care and detail, um, is very much more like Tantra than a whole lot of quote unquote traditional sex is. That ta BDSM can be and often is a very tantric practice. I believe you wrote this book for me as well, Barbara, <laughs> because I always thought it was way too woo you. for tantra. I, I'm like I'm. I, I thought. Excuse tantra me. Thank you. you. Tantra was way too woo for me, and I was like, I'm not in that world. I'm not some wooey individual. I love yoga and I can get down with some of the stuff. That's why I love the urban piece of that because it makes me feel like it's, it's almost cool. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I appreciate the, the, the ancient nature of Tantra and it's, and it's, uh, and, and where it, it stemmed from and, and its intention and what I know of it. And also I, I think of some of the, 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 looking at old books about Tantra and, and it was way too, for me, like religious and I, and I'm not religious. Right. So I loved also what you spoke to about being spiritual because we, I think about it as connecting to source, like connecting to whatever source, right. Because I can look at these trees and feel like I'm one with those. So a lot of what you said resonated with me and I am appreciative of this book. Amy talks about your book on the regular, she quotes you. She's like, as Barbara Carrera says, yeah. <laughs> X, Y, Z. And so, I mean, she's had so many quotes of, of you and, and meeting you has been so fantastic because you are, you're an inspiration to this world, not only of <laughs> Tantra, uh, not only to BDSM and kink and, and energetic orgasms, but to, to me as, as a sex educator and a person. So thank you for, for this work that you're doing. And um, I don't want you to go. I'm going to be selfish and keep you here all day. Okay. No, it's getting late on the East coast. Um, so it brings me to the question of what other offerings, because I know you have things coming up and, um, if people want to work with you, uh, perhaps take some of your courses, uh, can you, uh, explain where to find you, your book, sure. all the things, please. Yep. My books, urban Tantra, ecstasy is necessary. Luxurious loving. They're available wherever you buy books in whatever format you like. Um, Urban Tantra is the one that's available as an audiobook as well. The other two aren't yet. As I said, you can learn how to have an energy orgasm with my pre-recorded uh, guided meditation. Just go to barbaracarellis.com, look under books and MP3s, you'll find it there. Um, given that the pandemic is still with us and a bit unpredictable, you might say, the only in-person workshops I'm doing right now are my urban Tantra professional training programs uh, because they are like week long residentials and we can make agreements about safe protocols in those um, easily. We can make them easily. Uh, my next one is in upstate New York in April of 2022. And the one after that is in the UK in October. Uh, the fact that I'm not doing um, in-person workshops means good news for people who live all the places I can't get to right now. Online, we can all meet together and um, I'll be doing some online workshops again this coming spring, that is to say 2022. And just go to barbacarells.com, look for my upcoming events or go and sign up on my mailing list and I'll tell you when they start registering. Um, and if you're really eager for a workshop right now, tonight, uh, go look at Orgasms with Spirit. Love the title. Pretty much what all my work is about. Orgasms with Spirit. It's a recorded workshop and it's available also on my website. Um, yeah. All right. Thank well, there you. Were only, well, there was only yeah. one fruit fly sacrifice during this <laughs> recording, everyone. Barbara took it for she, the team. She breathed that she in. Breathed she had that orgasm in. with that thing. And you know what? <laughs> if she would have had a glass of wine, she could have sacrificed the fruit fly to the wine. So Ooh. that leads me to... That's what I was looking for the whole yes, time. Yes, it is. <laughs> so... 
I'm talking about margins wine, y'all. Not that uh, you want your fruit flies in your wine, but it happens sometimes if you're in wherever, Rhode Island or Amy's home where <laughs> I am. I've also almost inhaled a couple. And we love margins wine because it's small batch, boutique, woman-made wine. It's actually locally sourced here in Santa Cruz, but she gets grapes from all over California, from underrepresented areas, regions, and underrepresented varietals, meaning you might not have heard of the wines she's making. Go check out all you have to do, go check it out. All you have to do is sign up on marginswine.com for the newsletter. There's only like three releases a year, y'all. So go check it out. Now, Barbara, you are fantastic. I'm gonna yeah. breathe you in right now. <sighs> I think I'll go. Check out Margins Wine. Sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. It is delicious. And to all of you delicious, shameless sex listeners out there, we love you so much. I just invite you right now, go to iTunes, search for Shameless Sex, give us five stars. We read every single review. It helps folks out there find more amazing humans, authors, and just innovators like Barbara Corellis and others on our show. We love you. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.